Hello, wonderful people of God. So we come your way this month with exciting news from the camp of our man of God, Dr. Abel Damina, as he shares insights with us on the knowledge of the scriptures concerning the character of God in salvation. So we want you to stay glued to your screen as we broadcast this every day and do the work of an evangelist for us by sharing this message always. Also, like this message and then comment whatever you learn in the comment section. Thank you. And if you're new here, please don't leave without hitting on that subscribe button and that notification bell. Thank you. Now come with me to Romans chapter 1, verse number 8. You know, I told you to KIV that scripture on, on Friday. Romans chapter 1, verse number 8. PJ, read for me. <clears throat> First, I thank my God no, through Jesus. 18, sorry. Romans 1, 18. 1, 18, sure. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. For the wrath of God, you know, a group of people who call themselves Reformed Theologians. I don't know if you've heard about it. Reformed theologians. Okay? They, 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 are, they are these theologians who believe that God has already selected those that will go to heaven. Already. So there's no need to waste your time. If you're not elected, there's no need. No matter how hard you try, God has elected people that will go to heaven. They are the Reformed theologians. So they are the ones that are big on the anger of God, the wrath of God. And they explain that the wrath of God is God's justice. That you cannot do bad and go free. God will catch up with you. They are reformed theology. So they decided to camp around my teacher. And they are not camping for good. They are just camping to pick for hole. Just to be looking for, you know, for hole. That's all. And the more they are doing it, the more the weaker their voice is. Because you can't put on God who God is not. The Holy Spirit will not be a witness. And once the witness of the Spirit of God is lacking, the message will lack fuel. What fuels the message is the Spirit of God bearing witness to the truth. I don't know if you understand. What I'm so they are always using these Romans to attack my teaching. How can Damina say there's no wrath in God? He just, he's just preaching sugar-coated messages. Sweet, sweet talk. God is love. God is all love. God is all love. He doesn't talk about the, 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 the toughness of God. He doesn't talk about the judgment of God. He doesn't talk about the wrath of God, the anger of God. Damina is trying to make God look like a nice boy. But he forgets that God is, is love. But at the same time, God is judgment. But if you followed our teaching, we did a, a lot of work on the justice system. We, 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 we looked at God as, as the judge of all. And we explained that judge. We explained the justice system with a lot of scriptural exigencies. And we have understood that the word used in their time is not the same vocabulary in our time. Moreover, there are figures of speech, right? Did we see some figures of speech? Okay, all of that is important because all that comes into play in explaining biblical concepts. So the background of this statement is that he had said in verse 17, Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Therein is the righteousness of... Don't miss that because that's the foundation on which verse 18 came in. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Then he now says in verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed. So the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith for the wrath of God is revealed. But he doesn't stop at revealed. Is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. It appears there's a wrath of God revealed to those who hold the truth of God 
in unrighteousness. Now, look at Romans chapter 2, verse number 5. Romans chapter 2, verse number 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Did you observe? Against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Why did he say this? What was the background in verse 4 of this scripture? That's where the background is. So give me verse 4 of Romans chapter 2. Please pay attention. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Then verse 5 now says, verse 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent hearts, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the wait, day wait, of wait, wrath. Wait, wait, wait. Treasurest up unto thyself wrath. Against the day of wrath, the hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath. First of all, he talked about the riches of God's goodness. But when the riches of God's goodness is offered you and you harden your heart, then you treasure up for yourself wrath. Please don't miss that. So when he despises the goodness of God, what does he find? The wrath of God. Now, th this is similar to John 3.16 and John 3.36. Now look at Romans chapter 3, verse number 5. Romans chapter 3, verse number 5. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. If our unrighteousness commend, the righteousness of God. What shall we say? The law worketh vengeance. The law worketh vengeance. Okay? Write that somewhere. The law worketh vengeance. Look at Romans chapter 4 verse 15. Romans chapter 4 verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. The law worketh wrath or vengeance. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Wow. Now Romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 9. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 and 9. PJ. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Give me the next verse. I love the next verse. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be saved from wrath. So if it is his wrath, how can he be the one saving us from his own wrath? We shall be saved from wrath through him. He can be the savior and the custodian of the wrath. Mm -mm. Now, then down the line, he calls it the wrath of God. We need to find out. Is he a moody personality with good and bad? His good part saved us from his bad part. Think about it. The good part of God. You know, the two sides of God. The, the other side of God. Damina preaches one side, but God is like a coin. He has two sides for it to be valid. For God to be a legal tender, he must have two sides. <laughs> you are reading your nuances into the scripture. Say so for God to be validated, he has to have two sides. Bad and good. Light and darkness. Hate and love. Destruction and salvation. Hey, hey! He's a complete God. <laughs> 
All right. Well done, Mr. Bipolar Thinking. Look at Romans chapter 9, verse 22 to 23. And we will look at that a bit more. But just read that for me, Romans 9, 22 to 23. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Pay attention to that scripture. Next verse. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Read verse 22 again, because I want everybody to pay attention to it. Verse 22. 22. Yep. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? The vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Keep that in view. Move forward to Romans 12, 19. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. It is written, vengeance is mine. This is the day of the vengeance of our God. Vengeance is mine, saith God. Alright? Romans 13, 4-5, you can read that at home. He's talking about those in secular authority. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2-3. to 3. Let's read that one, PJ. Ephesians Chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. A lot of scriptures. That's how we establish doctrine. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Next verse. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were by nature the children of wrath. We were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 to 32. Ephesians chapter 4 31 to 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Uh -uh. Why do we put away wrath from us since God is the owner? I thought we should have what our father has. Let all bitterness and wrath. I thought God is an angry God. I, the Lord, am angry. You know, I've been in a service where a lady stood up. Kuri mama, kuri, suri, kiri, kuri, kara. I, the Lord, am crying. <sighs> it was not a joke with tears. The tears of the Lord. <laughs> ah, the Lord cried in that service that day. Till we all cried for the Lord. <laughs> it was a crying service. But in my young mind, because I was young, I was thinking, if God, the creator of the universe, is then we are not safe. <laughs> in my young mind, God cried in that song. See how everybody, even me, I cried. But I didn't know I was crying. So there are things that can make God cry. No, we are finished. If things can hit God and God cry, how much less us? It broke my confidence in God's ability. I started seeing God as a weakling who can't even help himself. Just like I cried when my father beat me, God is also crying. So who will go to who? God cried until he came to us in the church and cried for us to sympathize with him. And we actually wept with the Lord. We wept with the Lord. That's the line of a song. We wept with the Lord. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Read the next verse, PJ. And be, kind, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Did you observe every time he talks about the wrath of God, the next thing that follows is disobedience. 
comment upon the children of disobedience, disobedience to the gospel. Colossians chapter 3 verse 6. Colossians chapter 3 verse number 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. So what is consistent about the wrath of God? The consistent thing we have seen is that the wrath of God is related with sin or the gospel. Not heeding the gospel. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.